inflation. It, it is very hard to find what the real inflation rates happen to be, and oftentimes the info is dead wrong. In fact, the inflation rate is different for each individual depending on their spending habits. So you can hear some people claiming that it's 2-3% and maybe another web page will tell you that it's 6 or 7 and well again it depends on the individual. Within this video I'm going to go over 10 different categories of which uh, you can gauge the inflationary factor and ways you can determine on your end how much inflation there happens to be. So let's get started and we're going to be talking about uh, needs basically, the needs that people need. The first one is food. So how much does it cost you for the food? Now one of the items will not be energy. For energy is used in several of these different categories but any finished product of food, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Any meats, any vegetables, fruit, veg, uh, bread, snacks, whatever it is that you got for accessible food for today would, would count as food. Any type of ways of creating food in production form, any type of agriculture equipment, any type of livestock, stuff to make food, a stove or your barbecue, storing food, a freezer, stuff like a blender, your pots and pans, all that type of stuff would be allocated towards food. So whatever it costs today to buy a microwave would be allocated towards the cost. Now trying to figure how much it costs for uh, pieces of equipment that have many years of a life span for food. Well, if you have a product that you buy that lasts 10 years, then an easy way of allocating that is putting 10% per year for the cost. If you buy a stove for $1,000 that lasts 10 years, then that's $100 a year. And the energy is used for food, it's like the electricity cost and propane. So that's the first item of the needs section. The second one is clothing, which is uh, fairly basic. Uh, anything that involves clothes, your shoes, your jacket, your pants, all of that type of stuff is clothing. Don't think I need to go any more de depth on that. Number three is healthcare and happiness. And I'm putting the two together because being happy is really what's all about being healthy. So anything to do with medicine, fitness, and even personal hygiene would be placed in this category. So if you're talking about playing sports, you can almost put this in this level as well. Spending quality time that makes one happy, i.e. going to a ball game could constitu constitute in being happy, which reduces stress. So that is section number three. Number four is education which is your tuition fees, your books, movies. I got documentary in brackets because if you're doing movies that are completely entertainment, then that would go in either section number three or section number nine. And then, of course, your computer. And then computers can have different forms because I am going to also have computer for another thing that involves uh, communication and television again. If you're educating yourself within the television, well, then that would count as well. Number five is shelter. Again, self-explanatory. That's your rent or the cost of your home. And the main part of this category is just that. Other examples are like hotel and motel rooms. But again, pretty self-explanatory, as is number six, which is transportation. Your car, your truck, maybe a bicycle, your taxi fees, bus passes, train tickets, all that type of stuff. Anything that gets you from point A to point B. Number seven is communication. Your telephone, your cell phones, uh, as well as internet com uh, computers, television, books, as well as video cameras. Number eight is charity. Charity is where you give away resources to others, including voluntary through charities or by giving friends and strangers things. For example, if you donate uh, some fiat currency to some cancer foundation or the Humane Society, well, you're giving away 
something to another person. If, if you're baking pies and you give somebody a pie, that's giving away your portion of the food for somebody else. Now, involuntary would be stuff like taxes, useless fees, and interest. And it's totally involuntarily. And you look at something like, say, income tax. You really don't have much of a say in it for there's nothing else you can do. And if you're looking at uh, sales tax, you could go to a store and say, I refuse to pay taxes, but then they'll refuse to sell you the item. Now for fees, that depends on the fee. If the fee is used to a particular event, like an internet fee, that would not go towards charities. But if you got these useless, whatever type of fees that you can't find an area, and it would be this, as well as interest as well, because that's fiat currency. That's something that doesn't exist to begin with. And uh, think of something like this. If you're going to a casino and you're winning really, really well, you win a lot of money. Let's just say you happen to be in Canada where it's uh, tax-free. Therefore, you uh, win 25000 you go up with a bunch of people, and then you give your, uh, your two or three people that you're with uh, because they didn't do so well. Maybe you gave them each a 1000 or a couple thousand as part of charity. Well, if you look at casinos in the United States, they don't ask for their portion when you win. They just take it. Number nine is below. And this is wasted items that has its own category. When you blow money, it goes in here. If you buy something that you do not need, well, section three include happiness, and therefore items that don't make you happy or do not fulfill the other eight categories would be included in here. Number 10, balance for goods. Items use money. So they can get the items of the other nine lists that you need very easily. This can include fiat currency, gold, silver, investment grade real estate that one uses to get what they need. Now I say investment grade real estate because that's the house that you buy for yourself to live in. That's not investment grade that goes into shelter. But if you buy a house because you might want to sell it in 20 years and in the meantime you want to make rent profit well then that would be getting your profit for obviously this if you go buy gold and silver you're really just changing the particulars of category number 10 so with that all said to calculate what the inflationary values happen to be the best way to figure it out is to use an example how much do you spend on all of these items per year, per week, per month, or whatever period that you choose? You write the numbers in and balance of goods. That could be how much maybe that you make during that duration of time. And then compare that with, say, how many, however many years ago or months ago or whatever time frame that you want. How much would the, would the food have cost you? If, say, you were living in 1985 all over again, or whatever year you choose, how much would the clothing, health care, uh, education, shelter, transportation, community, charity, and below cost you if you, had it, if you bought it back then? Understand that if you buy a TV today, it might cost you $355 or $400. Whereas if you bought it 15 years ago, it might have cost you $1,400. Some things have deflated large in price. Some have inflated. Balance of goods, how much did you make back then compared to now? So, for example, if today the balance of goods that you make is 50000 for a period, and the combination of everything up top is also, we'll say, 50000 Whereas, say, 20 years ago, if everything cost you, say, 25000 to buy, but your balance of goods was 35000 well, inflation has really affected you tremendously, or at least it has affected you. So this is a quick example. If you want to look at how much inflation has affected you, you can take a look at almost any item that you see or even a service, and the question is, which of these categories would you put them in? Thank you for tuning in, and have yourself a great weekend and great day. Take care.